Historic snowfall brought several inches of snow across the Gulf Coast. And our January has been nothing but bitter cold across the United States, but is a warming trend in store. We have all the details and more next at the Weather Farm. Welcome to the Weather Farm. I'm meteorologist Christopher Hale. We have seen historic snowfall across the Gulf Coast on our Tuesday as that storm continues to move east on our Wednesday. Let's break down all the details. Looking at our observed precipitation, we saw widespread two to four inches around Houston. As we moved over towards Lafayette, Louisiana on our Tuesday, we saw nearly 10 to 12 inches of snow. New Orleans, you checked in about four inches, Baton Rouge about two inches. But as we moved into the panhandle of Florida, that snowfall again was around six, eight, 10 inches of snow. That system was going to continue to move to the north and east along the eastern seaboard through South Carolina and North Carolina. In fact, as we look at our weather map for this morning on our Wednesday, we see that system just off the coast of the Carolinas in Georgia. It has brought heavy snow across the Gulf Coast. It's brought some icing into the panhandle near Gainesville to Jacksonville. Uh, a little bit of icing is present in your area. Across the upper Midwest, we have a clipper system that has moved through Saskatchewan into Manitoba that is bringing lake effect snow to that area. That Arctic high that brought the bitterly cold temperatures across the Ohio Valley on our Tuesday is now moving out to the east as that we begin a warming trend. And out west, we continue to see warm temperatures, dry relative humidities, especially around Los Angeles where relative humidities will be in the five to 10% range for most of our Wednesday. Wildfire danger is still very high. In fact, they have issued a potentially dangerous situation for fire in the Los Angeles vicinity for Wednesday. Across the Canadian prairies, we do see light snow showers across parts of Alberta. As we make our way into our Thursday, we start to see a system moving onshore into central British Columbia, bringing rain to the coast, mountain snows, to those higher elevations. Looking out across the, the Intermountain West, we do see scattered snow showers across parts of Wyoming into Montana, stretching down to Colorado. Uh, looking across Iowa and Illinois, we have that leather remnant of a clipper system that is moving through. Not much snow is expected with this system, maybe a couple tenths of an inch at best as it makes its way through the Ohio Valley. Across the Great Lakes, we continue to see that clipper system just kind of sit there and bring those lake-enhanced snow bands to the upper parts of Michigan and to northern Wisconsin. High pressure continues to push off to the East Coast and also taking with it those bitterly cold temperatures. Now, as we take a look at our pattern for the upcoming week, we are going to examine the weather pattern from all levels of the atmosphere, starting at the 300 millibar level where the jet stream resides. We are then going to bring it down to the 500 level. And then finally, we are going to bring it down to the surface and take a look at the weather pattern that is going to change our weather. We have been extremely cold across the eastern half and two thirds of the United States for most of January. And we see signs that that pattern is going to break. We're not talking excessive warmth, we're talking more seasonable temperatures, which for many areas will be 20 to 30 degrees warmer than they have been for most of this week. As we look at our jet stream, we see a trough that is digging across the central plains. It's going to bring a reinforcing jab of cooler air, not Arctic air, to the eastern half of the United States. But behind it, we see a zonal flow taking shape. This is going to spread milder air across the central plains to the east coast. As we get into our weekend, we do see an area of low pressure here in the southwest that is going to bring unsettled weather to parts of California and Arizona into early next week. Looking at the 500 millibar level, here is that Arctic air that is making its way through the, the, the reinforcing jab, a little bit milder tame, but right behind it, we see strong ridging from California up to Montana, through on northern Ontario up to, on, uh, up to Hudson Bay. Those troughs continue to move through. Again, we're not really seeing deep Arctic air present, except just minor little jabs of Arctic air. 
But turn your attention to out here in California, we are seeing a deepening trough. And this is going to bring some very cold air to that part of the country. And this low is going to get cut off from the main branch. So we're going to see excessive ridging across the Canadian prairies, ridging across the southeast. But this low is going to get cut off. The real Arctic air is going to stay across parts of Ontario and Quebec and maybe graze the northern parts of Maine as we get to the beginning and middle parts of next week. And when we look at our weather pattern across the United States, we have that clipper system across the Great Lakes. This is going to bring heavy snow to those lake uh, snowband areas, not only in Michigan, but into Pennsylvania and New York as we make our way through our Friday. We have a little another clipper system making its way through Montana, but our attention is going to be focusing here as an area of low pressure dives into California as we get towards our Saturday. With it, we're going to start to see snowfall in those mountainous regions of California and Nevada. And here we can see by Sunday morning, we start to see some precipitation into Southern California near the Los Angeles area down towards San Diego. As we begin our next week, that all starts to shift through the Four Corners region into Texas and then bringing rain to those places that saw heavy snow. And so we will see rain, not snow. And we watch a couple systems making their way across the Canadian provinces, diving through the upper Great Lakes by the middle of next week. In terms of our snowfall, where we see those heavy snow bands, those lake infected lake enhanced snow bands. Here near Buffalo, we could see 12 to 18 inches by the time we get to Sunday morning. Here along Lake Erie, northwestern Pennsylvania, southwestern New York, we could see a, a widespread 8 to 12 inches. Then we take a, we kind of take our map a little bit further west. We see those clipper systems bringing general snow across the northern parts of Minnesota into Wisconsin, two to four, maybe isolated five inch amounts through our Sunday. But it is going to be the UP of Michigan, the eastern side of Lake Michigan, where we're going to see those heavier snow totals racking up to eight to 12 inches of snow. As I said, that clipper system that's going to make its way through Iowa and Illinois and Indiana on our Thursday is going to bring generally half an inch to a dusting, but it's going to weaken as it moves towards Indiana bringing maybe a tenth or two tenths of an inch of snowfall. But the big story, one that isn't going to completely eliminate the wildfire danger, but by the time we get to Sunday night, areas of Los Angeles could see anywhere from one tenth to two tenths of an inch of rain. As we get into the mountains, that's going to be more snow. And as we get down towards San Diego, that's where the heavier rain amounts will set up we could see a quarter of an inch to a half an inch as we make our way down towards San Diego. We also see rainfall stretching into Arizona, to Southern Nevada, into the far southwestern uh, Colorado. So we've been in this pattern with the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. And what this means is whenever there's a high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska, it dislodges that cold air uh, down into the lower 48. And we've seen that. But that pattern is going to go positive, as is the Arctic Oscillation. It's going to remain positive um, after we get through this weekend. And what this means, it's going to keep that Arctic air bottled up above the Arctic Circle and not really allow those jabs to go down. We also see the North Atlantic Oscillation going positive as we get past this weekend and into early February. What this means, when the North Atlantic Oscillation is positive, we see an, a ridge, a low pressure, a trough near Iceland. We see high pressure near the Azores. And so what that tends to do when we see the North Atlantic Oscillation, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and the Arctic Oscillation all positive at the same time, we tend to be more west to east with our weather patterns across the United States. This typically brings milder weather to the lower 48. In addition, it does tend to bring drier weather as the polar jet is kept farther north of the Canadian border, but we do introduce uh, the subtropical jet as we end our January and go into February. But these are positive trends that we are seeing in our weather. 
we don't see any severe Arctic outbreaks like we've seen for the last couple of weeks anytime soon. And this is our two, two, two this is our temperature anomaly map. So where we see again those purples and those blues, those are below normal temperatures for that location at that time of the day. And it's widespread, but we're not seeing those deep purples or those even white colors which indicate that core of the Arctic air over most of the United States. In fact, over Southern California, we're seeing some oranges five to 10 degrees above normal. But as we go into the weekend, we're gonna see warmer than normal temperatures across the far northern Canadian prairies into Ontario, into Quebec. And we're gonna to start to see a more seasonal pattern across the eastern half of the United States, anywhere from minus four to four degrees above normal. But it is out west that we are going to start to see the colder than normal temperatures, which we've not seen a lot this winter, take hold as that cutoff area of low pressure starts to spin and keep that cold air in place and introduce those slight chances of precipitation in Southern California. But we do see confirmation of that as we look at our weather outlook. Southern California into Southwestern Arizona, you're expected to be below normal as is Oregon into far western Washington, below normal as we end January, go into February. Nevada, western Utah, most of the central plains all the way up to the Dakotas, down to Texas and over to Florida, above normal temperatures. And again, as we kind of talked about, the real jabs of Arctic air, and they won't be severe by any means, they are gonna be confined to the far corners of the United States. So up in far northern New England, the Pacific Northwest. While that's happening here, we're gonna see the opposite happen because remember, whenever we get that Arctic air spilling down here in the lower 48, it's generally because we've seen uh, a ridge building across Alaska. And that's exactly what we're seeing. The cold is over Siberia, we see temperatures in the 20s and 30s across parts of Alaska. But as we go in through this weekend, this trough is and the Arctic air is going to start spilling from Siberia over into Alaska. As we make our way into next week, 20, 30, 40 degrees, even some 50 degree below temperatures as we get towards the beginning of February. And this is going to take root from Alaska to Yukon to the Northwest Territory towards into none of it. So again, we've been very cold here in the lower 48. Alaska's been warm, but that pattern is going to change as that area of low pressure starts to move off of Siberia into the Gulf of Alaska, and it's going to allow ridging across the lower 48 and a more zonal flow as we keep that Arctic air to the north. So something just to keep in mind, that there's always this balance in the atmosphere. When one area is way high or way low in temperature, another area of the, of the globe is seeing the opposite. So that's why we have that undulation in the patterns. We have ridges and troughs that move across the globe. We thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm. We hope you found this video very informative. If you like the content you see, like, subscribe, share it with a friend, click that bell notification icon so you can be notified when we have a new video ready for you. We hope to see you again real soon.